G'day guys, we've got a probability question here today which involves a continuous random variable. So let's have a look at it. We've got the probability density function of a random variable x is given by this function over the domain 0 to x to 1. What we first have to do is find the value of the coefficient a. We then have to find the probability of the random variable being greater than a half. And the mean, we also have to calculate the mean and variance for x. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's start with a. Now, what we know is if we've got a random variable or a probability density function that's defined over a particular domain, we know the area over this domain here, the area will be equal to 1. So what we can do is we can find a, so to speak, by going, well, we know that the integral over the domain 0 to 1 of this function, f of x, dx, is going to have to equal 1. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a probability density function. So we can expand that by saying, all right, well then, therefore, we, if we do integrate the function, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus ax dx has to equal 1. Cool. Again, so then what we can do is we can use a few laws of integration and we can go, well, this is going to equal the integral of 0 to 1 of x squared dx plus the integral of ax dx. This is also from 0 to 1. And that has to equal 1. Okay. So we can then pull this letter, because this is going to be a constant, we can pull that out the front. So I'm going through quite a monotonous way of doing it in terms of writing down all the working out, but the goal is to show you guys what I'm actually, like what's going on or the in my head while we're trying to do this problem. Okay. Now we can actually compute the integrals. So this is going to be x to the power of 3 on 3 evaluated between 0 and 1 plus a times integral of x is just going to be x squared over 2 evaluated between 0 and 1, and that has to equal 1. Okay, so let's evaluate these integrals. So the integral of this 0 is going to be 0, so it's just going to be what it is at 1. So 1 cubed is 1 over 3, so this is going to be 1 third plus a times a half, so a over 2, equals 1. Therefore, take the third over, we've got a over 2 equals a half, 1 take a third is 2 thirds, and then we can multiply both sides by 2, and we finally end up with a equaling 4 over 3. Cool, so that's part A of the problem. So let's get on to part B. Just change colour, make a little bit of a, we'll separate ourselves out. Cool, so the probability that the random variable is going to be greater than 0 0.5 is going to be equal to the integral from 0 0.5 
to the top of the domain, which is 1, of the function, which is x squared plus, we now know it's 4 over 3, so 4x over 3 dx. Cool. So if you're in the exam and this question wasn't worth too many marks, you'd probably be able to put it into a graphing calculator from here. If you haven't, if this is in a non-calculator part of your exam, you'd have to go about solving it. So this is going to be equal to, so we've got x to the power of 3 over 3 plus x squared over 6, so it's going to be 2 over 3, 2x squared over 3, evaluated between 0 0.5 and 1. Okay. Now we know if we evaluate this integral at 1, we're going to get 1. That's what we just calculated in the previous part of the question. So this is going to be 1 subtract 0 0.5 or 1 over 2 cubed over 3 plus, let's put that in a big bracket then, 2 times 1 over 2 squared over 3. And that is going to equal... We've got 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8 over 3. 8 times 3 is 24. So we have 1 minus, put a bracket, 1 over 24 plus. We've got a half squared is a quarter. Times by 2 is a half. A half divided by 3 is a sixth. Cool. Good save. Now, what we can then do is we can go, all right, 24 plus 6, 6 fours are 24, so it's going to be 5 over 24. So it's going to be 1 minus 5 on 24, which is equal to 19 over 24. Cool. So, Let's just move the, let's give myself a little bit more room. Okay, for part C, we're asked to find the mean, which the mean or mu, and the, the variance for this distribution. Now, Basically, let's write down our mean and variance formulas. We know that the mean of a continuous random distribution is equal to the expected value of x which is equal to the integral on the domain of the variable times the function that defines the continuous random variable on the domain. So that's how we'd calculate our mean. Now, our variance can only be done once we've calculated our mean because the variance, again, is the integral on the domain of the continuous random variable of x minus the mean, or the expected value, squared times the function of x dx. Cool. So those are our two formulas that we're going to need for this last part C of our equation, of our question. So let's get to it. So, 
the mean, the expected value of x times f of x dx. All right, so let's write that down, is equal to, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the function, which is equal to x squared plus ax, which we worked out a to be 4 over 3. So it'd be 4x over 3. dx. Cool. So what we can do, we can multiply that out. And we get the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus 4x squared over 3 dx. We can then evaluate that integral. And that's going to be x to the 4 over 4 plus goes to the 3 4 x to the 3 on 9 evaluated between 0 and 1. So, quite obvious to see at 0, this thing will be equal to 0. So at 1, it's going to be equal to a quarter plus 4 times 1 is 1 over 9, 4 over 9. Um, 4 and 9 both go into 36. 4 goes 9 times, 9 goes 4 times. So it's going to be 9 plus 16, which is 25. Cool. So that's our mean or our expected value. Moving on to our variance. We're going to have, like our equation suggests, the integral from 0 to 1 x minus mu, which is going to be x minus 25 over 36, all squared, times by x squared plus 4x over 3. dx. Now, the question that I've got this, the book that I've got this question for, or the exam that I've got this question from, has allocated two marks for this question. So what they're expecting us to do here is there for two marks, you're expected to be able to identify what the variance equation is, and then you'd be expected to sub this into some kind of graphics calculator like a Casio class pad or some sort of Texas Instruments nonsense. And it pops out the variance at the end, like I've just put into my calculator then. And it pops out the variance as being 331 over 6480. Now, in an exam, they probably wouldn't ask you to like calculate the integral or calculate the integral of that sort of messy function there, only because it's testing you more on your algebra and not on your ability to calculate the question or calculate the, any sort of solution. So let's just backtrack and see what we've done here. Okay, so we first got given a probability density function. We calculated the value for the coefficient a by ensuring that the um, probability density function, the integral of it across the domain for which it was defined was equal to one. And then we could use a little bit of algebra to compute that. We then, for part B, we were able to, once we found A, substitute the, that into the, the probability density function. We were then able to use that 
um, and say that the probability that x is going to be greater than 0 0.5 is going to be the, the integral from 0 0.5 to the top of the domain 1 of the function with respect to x. We then moved on to part c, where it asks us to compute the mean and variance of x. We ensured ourselves that we had these equations either in our memory bank or close at hand. So what we had is we had our mean or expected value was equal to the independent variable x times the function of x integrated across the domain a, a to b, or in this case, 0 to 1. We then used the solution to that problem to substitute it into our variance equation, which is the integral over the domain for the independent variable minus the mean or expected value squared times by the function with respect to x. Now, just before we, I made the comment that this question was only worth two marks in our test that we've been given. So the expectation that you solve that by hand is quite low. So I would go about just putting that into a calculator with um, integration or integral cap capabilities and just hit and go. And the calculator will spit out an answer very, very, very quickly. So quite a um, detailed question, quite a few different steps. Make sure you keep going over it until you get it. Do a few practice problems. If you run into any problems that you can't solve yourself, let us know and I'll do my best to solve them. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up, you know, do all the usual nonsense and I'll hopefully see you again here next time.